The National Rifle Association filed for bankruptcy on Friday. It's an unexpected development that could help the gun rights group break free from a lawsuit by New York's Attorney General seeking its dissolution. The NRA, currently incorporated in New York, filed for Chapter 11 protection in federal bankruptcy court in Dallas and said it plans to reincorporate in Texas to escape, quote, a corrupt political and regulatory environment. Chief Executive Wayne LaPierre, in a letter to members, wrote, quote, Texas values the contributions of the NRA, adding that we seek protection from New York officials who illegally abused and weaponized the powers they wield against the NRA and its members. The NRA was sued in August by New York Attorney General Letitia James, who accused LaPierre and other senior leaders of self-dealing and mismanagement. It's America's longest war, longer even than Vietnam, but it could now be approaching an end. For Afghanistan, however, it could just be the beginning of even more uncertain times. The pullout of U.S. troops has raised fears that without a peace deal between the Taliban and the Afghan government in place, there will be even more violence. You already see the signs there, because as we speak, there's fighting going on inside Kandahar city in District 8 and 9. So Taliban are now moving from rural areas to urban warfare. And that means that the Afghan forces are now fighting the Taliban inside the cities now, or the city outskirts. The American soldiers who remain in Afghanistan are part of a U.S.-led NATO mission. Foreign troops from dozens of other nations for the first time outnumber the Americans. NATO trains the Afghan security forces and relies heavily on the U.S. military for intelligence and logistics. These people have been queuing for hours to refill an oxygen tank that a relative suffering from COVID-19 depends on to survive. Normally hospitals would supply oxygen to patients, but many have run out, so people are having to buy them from private companies. Each oxygen bottle costs $68 and supply is outstripping demand. And as people's tempers rise, police have been deployed. The health system in the Brazilian state of Amazonas is on the verge of collapse and a national vaccine rollout has yet to begin. The Air Force has flown emergency supplies of oxygen from Sao Paulo to the city of Manaus and airlifted premature babies to other states from hospitals overwhelmed by a surge in coronavirus infections. All that and more in a moment, but first, South Africans can expect load shedding for the foreseeable future. ESCOM's forecast for power cuts show that for the months ahead, South Africans will find themselves in the dark. Earlier this week, the power utility implemented stage two load shedding, citing loss of generation capacity. Energy analyst Chris Yellen tweeted yesterday that the power utility is forecasting a code red risk of load shedding. It means they don't have any more uh, so-called generation reserve capacity uh, and that any further um, loss of, uh, loss of uh, supply and uh, generation units will result in load shedding. Uh, and as we've seen, we've had stage two load shedding uh, for several days now, um, planned till the end of Sunday. Uh, but the forecast of Eskom has uh, indicated, and uh, this comes directly from the Eskom website, so it's not my forecast, it's Eskom's forecast, is what they call a high risk uh, probability of load shedding every week for the next uh, three months. Stockpiles of toxic chemicals at Beirut's shattered port. They have been here for years, exposed only after the massive explosion in August. And like the highly explosive ammonium nitrate believed to be responsible for setting off that blast, these materials are also being kept in unsafe conditions. Some legal experts say this is another example of a dysfunctional state and corruption by Lebanon's ruling elite, who were told about the threat of the ammonium nitrate and didn't act. 
Where did all these chemicals come from? Who brought them to Lebanon? There has never been proper control over the port. No supervision and no proper monitoring. What happened at the port revealed the level of corruption across the state. Turkey is running out of water. Major cities are facing serious water shortages. Poor rainfall has led to a dry winter season. And the country is staring at its most severe drought in a decade. Without rainfall, some reservoirs could run out within months. Istanbul has about 45 days of water left. The city of 17 million people is struggling with water reservoirs at the lowest levels in 15 years. On the other hand, the capital Ankara has about 110 days. Officials warn that the situation is dangerous and there is no solution in sight. India launched one of the world's largest vaccination campaigns through video conferencing on Saturday, aiming to bring the pandemic under control. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed health workers. Modi will not immediately take the vaccine himself as India is initially prioritizing 30 million nurses, doctors and others on the front line. About 270 million over 50s or those deemed high risk will follow. Sanitation worker Manish Kumar became the first person in India to be vaccinated against COVID-19 in the country. On the first day of vaccinations, around 100 people will be voluntarily vaccinated in each of the 3,006 centres in India. At least 23 people who have received Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 shots have died in Norway. With 13 of the fatalities possibly linked to the vaccine's side effects, authorities said on Thursday. All 13 individuals were above the age of 80, according to the Norwegian Medicines Agency. It said common side effects of Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, such as fever and nausea, might have led to the death of some elderly patients. Along with the 13 deaths, 9 cases of serious side effects and 7 instances of less serious side effects have been recorded. The agency's medical director, Steiner Madsen, told national broadcaster NRK. Norway started COVID-19 vaccinations last month, right after the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine was approved by the European Medicines Agency. South Korea's military power remained among the top 10 in the world this year, while North Korea was down three notches from last year. According to the 2021 Military Strengths Ranking by Global Firepower, South Korea was ranked in sixth place among 138 countries, and North Korea was 28th. But North Korea had relatively higher rankings in some sectors, including active military manpower and tanks. The U.S. was ranked in the top place, followed by Russia and China. The analytics take into account around 50 factors, including military might, funding and logistical capability to determine the score.